Hey guys, so I wanted to spend some time to talk about some of my recent speculations. And let's start with the boggle. And when I mean the bog when I mean speculations, I just have tons and tons and tons. So each of these pages is multiple playsets, obviously. Boggles is very good. I don't feel like they're gonna reprint print. I like cards where the the name of the deck is the actual card. I just feel like you can't go wrong there because the card is so strong, you have a deck. I like this little cat wizard quite a bit. So Boggles is, you know, one of my favorite cards. Now let me talk about these mines and temples and things of that nature. So as you saw from my recent pickups from the flea market and things like that, there are a lot, there are a lot of, I have a ton of these. I suspect that they will not be reprinted for some time. I could be wrong. It's just so OP until it gets banned. I'm just, just going to collect them. These stones are extremely cheap. Um, the bobbles, I always like bobbles because they do help you um, get better qu card quality later on. But definitely things to look out for. These are always super easy to trade into, super easy to buy. I never have any problem getting them. It is a problem moving them at this point in time because so much of it has been printed. But at the same time, I really don't see a, another reprint of these. And then with the different artworks, it does add a collectability element. But Boggles, I love Boggles. It's a very fun deck. It's one of the more affordable decks in Modern. And Modern has largely outtaken Legacy and has even moved into standard popularity. So that is binder number one, which is not that interesting. It's just two cards I'm collecting right now or trading into, I guess I would say. Uh, binder number two, let me talk about some interesting cards. Raven's Crime is a common from, this is the original one, but it was reprinted in one of the Modern Masters. It is now quite expensive. It's like a dollar again from the 25 cents it used to be. So that was interesting as a card. This card is got pricey as well. It's a uncommon. It was recently reprinted. Sadistic Hippo, hip no tist. And as you can see, you got stacks up here, you got street right, and you have a stack down here. So I like it a lot. I like these uh, dredge cards quite a bit, um, including the stinkweed imp. And some other stuff I'm really fond of right now in terms of you know picking up lots of them is whenever you can get older cards that are in black border, you always do, even if it's not the most valuable card, just because it looks cool and it trades very easy like these two up there. There was a time Overmaster was extremely relevant for MTG Finance. That time is not right now. And uh, Lightning Axe is very good. You can pick them up extremely cheaply. Now let's talk about this card. I like it a lot. The other spike has increased in price uh, due to Atraxa. This card, it has modern playability. It has an infinite combo with it in modern. It's a little slower as combos go, but it's still a very, still a relatively good card. And last time we saw it was in time shift. Bloom, okay, Amulet Bloom, I mean, uh, Summer Bloom, I have so many Summer Blooms right now. And let me tell you about Summer Bloom. I love it. I loved it when it was banned and then the price dropped like crazy. Summer Bloom is still one of the best cards, in my opinion, EDH. It's something extremely fun to do in an all land deck. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, Mutagenic Growth is very good. Presence of Gond, if you are lucky enough to find these at your locals for like, five cents it's not five cents it also it has an infinite combo and popper with you know the sentinel which we see right here i'm pretty sure it's a sentinel anyway uh glistener elf is always very good wild nicotos are good nakramiba has been taking up in price uh blighted agents pick up 
in fact, to me as a mechanic is just so good and so powerful that I just want to pick up as many Infect cards as I can right now, including Glistener Elf and Blighted Agent. Blighted Agent doesn't see play in every single deck, but Glistener Elf definitely does. And I think that goes, oh, the Umbras. Let me tell, tell you about the Umbras. And in particular, Hyena Umbra, which is a common. Hyena Umbra is very, very good. It is EDH gold. I like the fact that Umbrams, in my opinion, are really not going to be reprinted. They're not reprintable, uh, meaning they're just a strange mechanic. I can't see them in Eternal Masters. Well, obviously they weren't in Eternal Masters, but I'm talking about like Eternal Masters 2. I cannot see them in the Modern Masters. Just a very unique um, dynamic. Plus, I love Boggles right now because I think as an entry point, Boggles is cheaper and it feels a lot of, it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, and it sees camera time from time to time. So this is what I'm specking on. If you guys have cards that you are specking on, I'm not specking on fancy cards or fetch lands or shock lands. I'm just doing this because these are cards that are really relatively easy for me to trade into, for me to accumulate a large amount of and then put in storage. Uh, and I like them because the entry point is extremely low. I'm trying to find, it's MTG Finance is no longer about buying a $10 card and hoping it goes to 40. That is not gonna happen anymore. It's more about buying a card for 25 cents and hoping it goes up to $4 so you can get rid of it for a dollar. Uh, it sounds bad, but it actually does work out a lot of times. Hyena Umbrum would be a good example of something like that. Anyway, bye guys.